everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Thundercats Classic Jackal Man figure from Mattel. Now, this figure comes in double packaging. You've got the outer black box with the double snake logo for Mumra on the front. Then you've got the Jackal Man name and the Thundercats logo down below. Off to the side, you have artwork for Jackal Man, and the other side, you have artwork for the Mutant's Lair. You then open this outer box. The inner packaging is a window box style of packaging where the figure is clearly displayed. You've got the red background. Instead of the Thundercats logo like we saw with Lion-O last month, you again have that double snake logo. And then down below you have some artwork featuring Lion-O with the Sword of Omens. On one side of the packaging you have more artwork for Jackal Man, and then the other side you just have the name. And then on the back you have colored artwork and a brief bio. All right, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging along with the other contents. Now this figure comes with a couple different accessories. So first he has this long handled battle axe and the handle is done with just a brown plastic, but to make it look like wood, they've given it a wash effect and they've also sculpted some line work in there. So I think it definitely looks like a wood shaft and it's got this little pointy tip at the end. And then for the blade, on the back portion of it, it's just a gray plastic, but for the blade, itself they've given it a metallic finish and it's kind of darker towards the back and then it gets kind of lighter and picks up the lights a little more shinier towards the edge of the blade so it definitely looks like metal I also like these little uh, divots in the edges of the metal so it looks like you know it's seen some battle and definitely looks like it would be a sharp blade if it was actual metal Next he has this club and again it's done with a brown plastic and they've given it that wash effect to make it look like it's wood and you've got these little swirls sculpted in it so it looks pretty good and it's got a little spike on the end of it or on the side of it so it looks like you know what he used in the cartoon and it's done with a flexible type plastic it's pretty hard up here at the end but the handle part is a pretty flexible plastic so it does bend a little bit. And then finally he comes with two different pairs of hands. So you've got one pair that's made for gripping the axe and then you've got the second pair of hands with a little bit wider grip made for holding the, the club. And the sculpting on the hands, you've got some line work to give it that kind of fur look to it. He's got the little claws on the end of his fingernails and it's just done with the brown paint. But overall I think the hands look pretty good. Switching out the hands is pretty easy. You just pop them off. you got the little peg on the end of the hand and the hole in the arm and then and you just push in the hand you want to replace it with. Now I just want to note that the plastic on the hands is a pretty soft plastic so there's definitely a lot of flexibility there and you might even find when you take the hands out of the packaging that they're a little bent out of shape that their grips are a little too wide open so if that happens you can take a hair dryer to these and then just push them in once you heat them up and then when they cool off they should be um, be able to hold their weapons with a better grip. So for the figure itself I think they've done a good job Job. The Four Horsemen have done a good job with the sculpting and the paint applications are pretty solid. I like the face sculpt. I think he looks pretty true to how he did in the original cartoon. I like how they sculpted the ears and then the fur throughout the figure with the little nostrils and fangs. I think the eyes look good. They've used this kind of orangey brown paint and then you've got this cream colored paint that has some wash effect. You've got this mane that's done with a soft rubber material and it's actually separate from the figure and it's actually attached to this harness piece that he's wearing. Wearing. In the harness you've got the brown stripe and the black stripe and he's got this gray shoulder pad. On his left arm he's got this wrist gauntlet that's got the cream color with the little cheetah spots on it that look pretty good. And then he's got this green loincloth that he's wearing. Again throughout the figure you've just got all that line work to give it that fur look. And then for the toes he's got the sharp claws. So like I said I think the figure looks pretty good and he looks very true to how he did in the cartoon. So this figure stands just a little bit over seven inches tall. Here's a comparison with the Lion-O figure Mattel released last month. A comparison with Mattel's Masters of the Universe Classics Trap Jaw figure. And then finally here's a comparison with Bandai's classic Mumra figure. So for articulation, you can turn the head to the left and the right. He's got a little bit of back and forth movement, but not a whole lot. Arms attached with your standard ball hinge joint, so you can get his arms out good on both sides, even with the mane and the shoulder pad because they are flexible rubber type material. He's got a bicep swivel, single hinged elbow, so you can only bend his elbow about that much. Swivels on the wrist, hinges on the hand, so good up and down movement there. He's got an ab crunch type joint, so he can crunch down a little bit and he can look back there. He's got a waist swivel, 
legs are attached with ball hinge joints so you can do the splits good you can get the leg forward good and you can do the leg back you've got a thigh swivel up high single hinge knee so he can bend his knee about that much hinges on the feet so he's got up and down movement and he does have ankle pivot and then two peg holes on the bottom of the feet okay so that's my review Overall, I like this figure. I like the sculpting detail, the paint applications are solid, and the accessories are pretty good. And if you're a fan of the original Thundercats cartoon, I think this is one you'll definitely want to add to your collection. Now, if you've been following our New York Comic Con coverage last month, you'll know I talked with the folks at Super 7. They're currently going to be taking over the Masters of the Universe Classics line from Mattel starting at the beginning of the year, and they're actively working on also trying to get the Thundercats license so that they can continue this Thundercats Classic line as well. And from what I was told, things seem to be going in a positive direction in that regard. Hopefully we'll know something soon or at the very latest in February during Toy Fair. So definitely I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that. Now this particular figure I believe is already sold out at MattyCollector.com so if you didn't pick it up there you'll probably have to resort to the secondary market at this point. We'll have a full image gallery up at ToyNewsEye.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined please like the video. Also if you haven't already please follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I'll have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time I'll catch you later.